And we're back. Some things uh, got delayed a little bit. It's been a couple of weeks, maybe a month more. Um, where we left off last time, the wiring is done and completed. The battery's put back in. Uh, the expansion block for the lights and everything that are going to go on the truck is all installed. Now we just need to put the radiator in. Got some really bad flooding, so I just did it in case I needed to move stuff but it was stopped before I needed to put the radiator. So we still get a little bit of footage of the radiator going in. Um, I did a little bit of testing and turns out none of my electric fans fit. So I have to put the failing clutch fan back on. So you can see in the back corner, I've got the fuse box in. I need to unbolt it because I forgot to put the bottom panel on. And then the lid fell somewhere. I don't know where the lid went. And then I've got a bunch of spare wires for everything else that'll be added. And I'll replace, I'll clean the wiring up later and get everything back together. But let's put that radiator in here. Got a nice fancy brand new radiator cooked up by Performance Radiator and shipped out same day. Let's see if I can get it in here without destroying my new fins. I hate bent radiator fins. Set that right there. Get these bolts. Sits up quite a bit. And uh, at some point I'll buy some new radiator hoses. Right now, you don't need that. Radiator hoses don't do nothing. Come on, thread in. All right, what is going on here? I can see that it's lined up. Uh, just the radiator hose might be in my way. There we go. Let's see if we get the bottom bolt while I'm standing here. And we'll use this one, we'll find what size it is. I think that they were 12s. That's sort of what I remember. And they are 12s. Look at that. With all the rain we've been getting, I've noticed that, uh, uh-oh. All the rain we've been getting, I noticed that uh, there's water in the cab quite a bit. I don't know where it's coming from. I was told by the previous owner that the sunroof leaks and it was covered in flex tape and we took the flex tape off and I pressure washed the roof and there was no water coming in anywhere. But now that it's been sitting here through a couple of pretty big storms, keep kicking the camera then there's a bunch of water coming through and I can't tell exactly where it is and everything's pretty wet in there but it looks like that the window gasket between the canopy is letting water in so the canopy is funneling water because it's got a gasket between the canopy and the cab and it looks like that gasket's funneling water into the window seal. And then it's leaking through there. So that needs to be fixed because there's quite a big puddle on the floor in the back. And I'm tired of having cars with puddles in them. Well, performance radiator. It's a very nice looking radiator. Um, the tank itself is the same size, but your brackets don't necessarily match. This bottom bolt does not fit the bolt hole. So let's see if I can get this to adjust and get the threads to line up. <clears throat> there we go. There, our bolts are lined up.
kicking the camera again. There we go. And now that the radiator's in here, I just realized, I think, because it's been so long, that the order is the fan goes in and then the radiator. For Christmas, I finally have a new set of ratcheting wrenches. I used to have an <coughs> I used to have an amazing set. And slowly over time they blew apart. Probably from me abusing them. And also just because I had had them for quite a while. They got pretty old. And then they discontinued them, and I wasn't able to replace them. And the new ones that Cobalt came out with at the time kind of sucked a lot. But I got these new ones. They aren't gearless, which is unfortunate, but they're a fully recessed ratchet on this side. And then the head still has strength over there. So I think that they'll take the abuse that I'll give them. Ow. Why is everything gotta be so sharp? Get our cap on there. Gotta get the old radiator hose off the old radiator. Preferably without breaking it. I'm sure someone will want a core or we're gonna destroy it. Let's see, do I have something nice to set this on? I don't fill it with rocks. All right, got that off the radiator. It's uh, quite a pain to take off. Hopefully it fits on here. Actually, before we do the hose, where's the fan? Uh, which way's up and down? <sighs> yeah, make sure that rusts on here real well so that I'm screwed in the future. Heaps of room in there. It's gonna fit perfect. I have to remember which ones of these are the fan nuts. Not that one. That one's too clean. Here we go. We've got these little washers. Perfect. Let's see if we can get this in here. Now that you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to block everything that you can see by continuing what I'm doing. And then I'm going to drop all of these little tiny nuts on the ground. Also, this belt's very hard. But it doesn't show any internal cracking, so on the truck it goes. Oh god, it's touching my radiator fins. Alright, and now that uh done all this, put a new radiator in, all this other fancy stuff, that doesn't fit. Of course not. I'm still going to have the same cooling issues that I was having before. Absolutely nothing's going to change. The only difference is, is that the electrical's fixed now that I've been wanting to fix for the exact reason that it got fixed. It finally caught fire. I had my fingernail ripped off the other day, and then I slip and smack my busted fingernail. It's always, always the fun part. Oh, ugh, I don't want to touch that. Gross. Get that on there. Make sure that's lined up and that's lined up. I don't know if any videos still exist of it, but I used to have a Subaru Brat. And in the owner's manual for the Subaru Brat that I had, I must have got the Australian version. Because when it told you how to set the tension properly for the alternator belt, it said find a suitable stick to apply enough leverage that you tension the belt to where it doesn't slip or squeal, and then tighten the set point down. And that's where it belongs. I always thought that was funny. Let's see how much stretch does this belt have? That's quite a bit. I don't really like that. I think we're going to go right there. We're going to call that good. That's nice and Subaru spec. I'm sure Mitsubishi has the same spec as Subaru. Well, we got a fan. Got a radiator. We've got that. That's going to arc out my battery and start another fire. Yeah, I think it's toast. Um, let's put this hose on because I appear to have... Oh, it's right here. The hose clamp. Maybe we'll be getting new hoses sooner than I was thinking because that's really bad good and tight 
now that the fan is in the way of me tightening this one, let's see if we can snake down in here. Man, this hose clamp is shot. I'm gonna have to buy a new one of these too. It's okay, it's just the power steering. I don't need that. It's really weird that the power steering is the only thing on this truck that does not leak or cause problems. Can't wait till I have the time to put this truck out of my misery and split the transmission apart and do the transmission rebuild on it. It'll be my first one. I've never uh, gotten into that. Sounds scary. Sounds like a good challenge. Curious how long that'll take. Since this was just putting parts in. Not even waiting on parts. Gooten tight. Let's see what kind of juice we got. Antifreeze and coolant. Concentrate. Perfect. Get that garbage out of here. Make sure to spill it and make a mess everywhere. Yeah, I was like, there's no way that the engine's full. Then, unfortunately, I've got that sick well water. So, we're going to uh, use some nice crusty water to dilute this. Uh-oh. Went too fast. No making a mess here. The whole cooling system is vibrating as the air bubbles work out. Get the hose cutter 9000 on there. Then we're going to go fill this with water. I think we'll start it up right there. Curious if this thing will even start. Get these where I'm not gonna lose them. Make sure the, all right, the overflow overflows empty. Get this out of here. All right, well, the battery's charging, but something is wrong. Because I checked the key when I put all the electronics together that the fuel pump function and I am not getting the fuel pump and I'm not getting any in cab power so that tells me I'm also not getting any dash lights it tells me this is being an issue here because the tank's empty this hasn't run in a while I'm gonna make sure we get all the air bubbles out of the carburetor check that nothing's glowing there's no Warning lights hanging out in here somewhere. Fuel pumps running. Alternator belts tightened. Fans tightened. Batteries reinstalled. Um, still no smoke. Don't feel any relays freaking out. All right, let's try it. See what happens. There we go. Make sure we flood it. Wow, would you look at that? It's vaguely still alive. Sure sounds like he's gonna die too. Don't worry, it's cammed. It always idles like this. Make sure I lose my fingers down here.
It sure sounds like we're missing a cylinder. That was weird. Something's going on. I just had my check EGR light and my uh, whatever that other light is on the dash. And then while it was revving, the engine just started running better. And then all my lights went out, except the parking brake. My fusible link isn't getting hot. We're still charging the battery. So maybe the battery was just that low that the uh, distributor wasn't firing properly. Let's see where this street goes. Never been back in here. Um, I mean, it drives exactly the same as it did before. Hopefully it keeps driving because I don't want to push it this far. This is quite a distance. Is this a parking lot? Can I go through here? We're going through here. It's got its normal vacuum leak buck that it has because I am still uh, running with no jets. There's just a 10 millimeter bolt in there and that is my jet. But it idles, everything's good. So we're back. Um, let's go back the way we came. Sounds like a good idea. I think that's a dead end, even though there's no signs over there. Uh, yeah, my temp gauge is the same as it was before. So the radiator did not fix the issue. I just, hopefully, don't have a coolant leak anymore. Oh god, we're doing a burnout. Alright, so we had some small issues at the end there that I had to go deal with. Um, the truck is back. Truck runs. It wasn't smoking anymore when it came back, but I've got this nice wet spot down here. And I can't find exactly where it's coming from, but it appears that there's a cut in that hose somewhere. So we might be getting a new hose sooner than expected. And I don't know if it's the angle of the dangle or not. There's quite a bit of water over here. But I think it's just where the truck leans. It looks like it's just running downhill there. It's not coming out of this side. And then there's just a small bit of drops there where I got coolant on the fan and it flung off, I think. Hope. Uh... Let my phone wide out real quick. Let's see how much coolant's left. Let's see if I can get my jacket off here. Open this thing up. Ugh. All right, no pressure escaping. It's got coolant in there. I don't think you can see that. I can't see what I'm doing. We still have coolant, so that's cool. Normally, after I drive this truck, on the old radiator, the five, 10 minute drive that I just did, the top of the radiator would be empty. Our overflow that I'm washing out, let's try this. The overflow is not overflowing, so that's cool. It's a bit higher than full, but I never emptied it. Right, focus. Right here, it's wet above the thing. I think that's where all the water's coming from. Finally got hot and got pressure. So driving around did open the thermostat. Um, I want to change the thermostat. I don't trust it. And it's one of those stupid safety stats from O'Reilly's that are known to fail all the time. The unfortunate part about it being a safety stat is that they fail open, but so far everyone I've messed with fails closed. And half of them are dead on arrival, failing closed. So that's always nice. I don't see any leaks anywhere else. Sorry about the sound quality and picture quality at the end. Got dark and my camera does not run on its own battery. It has to be plugged into a wall. I'm trying to fix that. So hopefully I'll be able to take the nice camera with us. Next time I go do something, make sure to uh, like, comment, and subscribe on this. I don't know what's next. I've got a lot of stuff 
built up right now.